Hi there, this is the first video in Vector Dynamics, and uh, the segment that we're going to be starting off in is Kinematics, which will focus on um, the mathematical representation of objects moving. So we just essentially apply mathematical equations to motion. And um, more specifically, in this page, I'm going to talk about just a simple situation, one-dimensional, or what some like to call rectilinear. Uh, and basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some well-known equations and give you a little graph example of that, and then maybe we can go on to a few examples. So, uh, first off, let's just know our terms, our variables, I mean. Uh, S would be displacement. And obviously V would be velocity. And A would be acceleration. So it's important to know um, all your variables. So first off, uh, let's just start off with something that we know. Uh, v equals ds dt. And remember, another way of saying that is V is equal to delta S over delta T. So, the change in distance over the change in time. That's distance over time. That's your speed, right? Your velocity. So just realize that this is the same thing as SO, SN, over T O S T. Same thing. But a more general form that uh, a lot of people tend to use, especially in a lot of physics classes, is the displacement at two or out equals N plus V T. And T would actually, this is actually um, what I would call like delta T. So that's the amount of time taken. So uh, rather than using out and in, we could just use S2, S1 plus V, T. And this is a common equation that you'll see in your basic physics class. And using that same uh, train of thought, we can actually use a similar layout for acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, which once again is going to be V2 minus V1 all over T2 minus T1. Well, just realize that if T1 was 0, then T2 would be equal to our delta T. So let's just say that you're starting from 0. That's where we set a reference point. And that's how we're able to somewhat establish these equations in the simple forms that they are. There's the velocity and acceleration relationship. And there is one more, um, and I don't really want to divulge into it, but A equals the displacement, all of them to the uh, power of 2, right? So what that's saying, and if you were to break this down, you're basically going to relate, um, just find a big generalized equation. It's basically the combination of the, the previous two equations, but I'll just give you the solution. x2 equals x1 plus vt, and this is uh, vot plus a, or one half at squared. So this equation um, realized that 
there are some conditions to this, uh, and, and to all of these kind of clouded equations that um, your t1 or your or t naught must equal zero seconds. That's the only condition that this will uh, occur in. Um, and then, other than that, I believe that's all the conditions that are required, other than the fact that you're, you're acting in a linear fashion. But uh, if you were to take time out of this and do a combination of a few of these equations, you can actually find that V dV equals A dS. So these four equations are the, the key to doing a lot of rectilinear motion problems. So, um, well, I don't, I wasn't really planning on um, dissecting how these occur. I was planning on showing us how we can use these relationships that were determined by much smarter people than you or I. So anyway, uh, let's just kick off with an example. I'll just put example right here. In this example, uh, let's just say we do the typical one we always do, right? S. Let's just say this is S in feet, and this is T in seconds. Okay, well let's say you have this little function here, and this is S equals T squared. Well, if we were to take the derivative of that, we know that by using this, by using the function of uh, velocity, velocity equals ds dt, we're actually able to simplify it even more. This would be, now this axis would be v which would be feet per second, and this would be still second, d second, and it would just be a straight up line, in similar fashion, so v equals 2t, and we can use the other relationship with the acceleration, so a equals dv dt, use this relationship once again this would be acceleration so that would be feet a second squared and this would be second great so and that would stay constant at two so a equals two So with each of these, uh, I just wanted to show you that um, mathematically, all we're doing is we're taking the derivative, and that's how and that's how you would go. And obviously, conversely, you take the integral or the antiderivative. So um, you can just a answer like any general questions, like uh, how far, how far uh, would we go? would we go in one minute? And the key word there would be far. That's uh, asking for displacement. So if s is equal to t squared, then it must equal 60 squared, which is equal to 3,600 feet. That's simple. No, just you can you can ask yourself other questions about that time. How fast are we going at one minute? And you just use the use the equation that you're that you pulled out. 
v is equal to 2t equals 2 times 60 equals 120 feet per second. Simple. And, I mean, you could say how fast, uh, how fast, or how, what is the acceleration, I should say. What is A equal to? And you'll realize that A is always constant and not dependent on time. So that's always going to be 2 feet per second squared. And just realize that this is really where your calculus foundation comes in. And uh, a lot of you will struggle in this because of a weaker uh, foundation in calculus. So anyway, let's go through some examples.